We are moving into the altogether different topic, <coughs> that is uh, science and tech. As I have already discussed, this is IAS main syllabus primarily, which is coming in Gender Studies Paper 3. Gender Studies Paper 3. <coughs> so, this science and technology out of this 250 mark. This alone it occupy around 70 mark minimum. Sometimes they used to ask up to 90 mark. It's clear. So in that aspect, it is it's very, very important. And another one is science and tech related questions. Few questions will always will be there in prelims also. But if you see the prelims syllabus, they will simply mention it's a current affairs. But few questions related with science and tech, they always used to ask. That's clear. And what is the level of science and tech they'll go? The UPSC will go. Uh, particularly UPSC, IAS mains, they are slightly advanced. They'll go for an advanced level. And currently, what is there in the news related with science and tech or the latest breakthrough? Then they will raise the question. Say, for example, <coughs> any of you aware about uh, three parents' baby? Any of you? Have you heard about it? This term, three parents' baby. So far, anywhere? Okay, th this is a kind of new technology in terms of uh, treating uh, what you call genetic disorder for the newborn baby. Okay, so they can go for a genetic engineering on the stem cells itself. So they'll collect the chromosomes and the genes from the different three parents. So they, they create the baby. So this is a <clears throat> new breakthrough. It has happened in South America. Okay. It was a breakthrough in 2017. Same year they were asked in IAS mains. 2017 mains it is asked. Keep it in your mind. But if you go, even if you go to the doctors and if you ask them someone, someone uh, what is three parents baby, they may think <clears throat> not all the doctors are updated. Okay. But the UPSC is well advanced in terms of raising a question under this particular section. So you need to match with them in terms of your preparation so that able to be able to answer the question. And another example I can say, <clears throat> have you heard about the cloning? Have you heard about the cloning? Yes, sir. So what do you mean by cloning? Um. Anyone? What do you mean by cloning? <clears throat> and the cloning, even now it is an advanced technology, right? It is an advanced technology even today. But it is a old technology which came into the news in the year 1998. So the cloning is nothing but I can make <clears throat> the exact Xerox copy of mine. I can create a baby. When the baby grows, he exactly looks like me. He'll be a male and he exactly looks like me. So that's the technology. It's an amazing technology. But for some reason, the human cloning is banned across the globe. Okay, why it is the ban that we are going to see in the topic? That's not an issue. But 1998, they when they invented this particular technology, <clears throat> it was done very first time in a dolly. It's a name of the sheep. Okay, so they have done it in this. Same year in IAS mains they were asked. Keep it in your mind. If you go back and check IAS mains paper of 1998, you will get this answer. You will get this question. <clears throat> okay, why I am stressing these two points, three parents, baby and cloning. They are very, very advanced. UPSC is very, very advanced. Keep it in your mind. When it comes to this particular section.
okay and they will uh, they will take uh, what do you call uh, nice question the questions will be really interesting and uh, when you when you preparing it you will come to know science and technology it's a very interesting area to listen the class as well as for the study and to for answer the question also but you need to be little more aggressive in terms of collecting data from science and tech okay and if you take when you are reading a newspaper if you take every thursday there is a section called science and tech every thursday only on that particular day the science and tech section will come this section you have to study closely keep it in your mind because uh, the hindu also will almost match with uh, upsc they will try to collect the data from the different corner of the world they'll put it here <clears throat> okay so that will be exactly it's highly enough to preparation plus attend the session uh, follow our study material and ppt that is highly enough to answer these questions okay 70 to 90 mark you can very well you can score it's clear so now we will move on to this topic <clears throat> Here the the chapters. What are the chapters we are going to get under this? The first chapter is energy, defense, technology, space technology, biotechnology means something related with pharma or uh, what do you call uh, medical medical technology. All those things will come under this. IT that is your own field, information technology, AI, artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, automations. And you can add a few more things, say, for example, uh, drones, drone technology. Okay, and uh, what do you call a uh, few more things are there? I forget the name. Uh, those things will come under the latest development, the recent development. Okay, related with that, the questions are coming in your exam. Say, for example, Internet of Things. UPSC already started asking in prelims in 2018 and 19. If you check 2018 and 19 question, they have started asking about Internet of Things related questions. You just imagine Internet of Things are it's a latest breakthrough. It is like a couple of years back. The terms are very often it's coming up. Even the big data you can add it here. So these related questions are UPSC already started asking in prelims as well as in the mains. Nano technology, it's well known. <clears throat> and the latest, any latest research and breakthrough in any aspects. It's clear. So they are all will be asked by UPSC under this particular area. Okay. So today's topic is we are going to see about energy. Okay. So energy means what? <clears throat> so here the energy means <clears throat> it's nothing but it's a power power generation keep it in your mind so the power generation is a major international politics it's very very important keep it in your mind in fact the countries are fighting countries are fighting they're ready to go for a war just for energy just for energy say for example uh, gulf war with iraq by US, Iraq and US, when Saddam Hussein was there. That was the recent major battle, I can say. After Second World War, the reason major <coughs> war, declared war between the countries. It happened that is a Gulf War between Iraq and US. The primary reason for the war is nothing but oil, petrol and diesel. Okay, Iraqi oil is what do you call it? Quality wise, quantity wise, it's rich. Now the entire Iraq is occupied by US companies. US companies. It is clear. So the country is ready to go for a war. Keep it in your mind. So now you, you take India and China. Okay. India and China. There is a lot of differences between India and China. Now the recent times. Why these things are happening is the background reason for the conflict between India and China is nothing but who going to be a Asian power in the entire Asian region, whether it is India or China. That is a close call. But indirectly, if you see that energy resources plays a major role 
in this conflict keep it in your mind say for example everybody knows ladakh region arunachal pradesh okay so in these places india is having the shale gas keep it in your mind which is yet to be touched yet to be what do you call uh, produced by indian authorities indian government they are not in a position to think about right now because uh, strategically what indian government is thinking is let us not consume too much of oil or natural gas whatever it is available domestically let us try to consume as much as possible by purchasing from outside because it is a non renewable energy it is non renewable energy oil and gas is a non renewable energy it is crazy. so that is a strategic decision taken by government of india so they want to spend the money they want to spend uh, i mean uh, uh, spend the energy uh, which is coming from outside from other sources not from the domestic so across india we have identified large number of places the shale gas is there that is one of the reason it's a, it's a realistic reason behind a lot of and ap i mean arunachal pradesh <clears throat> it is clear and apart from that there is an another conflict is the between india and china something related with nuclear energy that is called nsg that is all i am going to explain you so that you will come to know what is the international level of politics involved something related with energy it is clear so here the energy means it is a power generation not only for energy consumption it is also act as a political power political power you got the point so suppose if say for example if you want to make india as a superpower by 2050 what you have to do single stroke you you produce triple the size of electricity generation what you do right now within next 20 20 10 20 years and india become a superpower as simple as it is is it make it 3x whatever you are producing right now is it make it triple that too in a quick possible manner that too if possible if if you are getting come up with a new technology or renewable energy new technology non polluting technology then it is really good the world is ready to listen you so that's the condition right now across the globe so if you take china or if you take us or if you take russia or any other world power when they are going and creating a conflict with some other country the primary reason behind it much if you closely analyze it must be somewhere related with energy am i clear so that you should keep it in your mind so the energy plays a major role in terms of designing international politics okay now we will come to the basic data renewable energy what are the energy will comes under renewable what are the energy sources will comes under renewable anyone solar, solar energy okay and wind energy tidal wind tidal geothermal, geothermal uh, hydroelectricity hydro uh, nuclear also i guess to an extent it's a nuclear okay now india is producing energy from all these sources solar wind tidal geothermal hydro as well as nuclear but except nuclear rest of all other areas we are almost reaching saturation point almost reaching saturation point what do you mean by saturation point even though they are renewable energy as far as india is concerned india's geopolitical position is concerned they can produce only certain amount of energy say for example if you take wind india can maximum produce 45000 megawatt this is our maximum capacity if we put all the investment into the wind wind turbine for the next couple of decades we can able to reach this <clears throat> beyond that you cannot go that's the maximum possible limit with the available technology maybe in future if the technology differs 
maybe the production capacity may increase as of now only this much so right now how much we are making it we are making around 12500 megawatt and above okay we are keep marching it and india is one of the fifth largest country in terms of wind energy producer fifth largest producer it's clear across the globe and we have a huge potential but the amount of investment is a key so we need to get a huge amount of investment because what you see normally the wind turbine see what we see the wind turbine this one wind turbine investment is approximately it is around 5 crore keep it in your mind approximately it is around 5 crore so 5 crore each turbine need to be invested so the investment is a what do you call a, a huge stumbling block to reach our maximum capacity so gradually we are what do you call limping limping ahead compared to other solar and other thing wind energy we are producing to an extent it is good next is the solar india is a hot tropical country it is a hottest climate and it is highly suitable for the solar but even then see in fact the solar technology is very old technology even i have studied in my school days 20 30 years before in my school days i have studied about solar even now we are studying about the solar but how much we have produced so far only last year we have reached around 10000 mark 10000 megawatt the two with what you got the last two years i can say uh, say for example tamil nadu they commission one plant in ramna district it is around 5500 megawatt another one is uh, karnataka tumkur they placed around 5000 megawatt i mean 4500 here in uh, tumkur so totally around 10000 before that we had a stand alone project here and there it goes for around 1500 megawatt so overall we are around 11 to 12000 megawatt production right now under solar but if you see that the the technology has taken almost what do you call 30 to 40 years to reach this position whereas wind energy it is started only around the 2000 uh, what do you call 7 or 8 just 12 years they could able to reach 12000 megawatt why it makes lot of difference why solar is not able to pick it up whereas wind is picking it up very fast even though solar is more suitable for india why the difference so you got my question <clears throat> yes sir like which why wind could accelerate like so much yeah why so why wind energy could able to accelerate quickly then solar both are renewable and non polluting energy like sir land so, problem is there uh, in india we to set up the uh, these kind of uh, wind mills exactly exactly so the reason behind it one single reason is uh, in you know over a period of time the last two decades if you see that the cost of real estate it become high the real estate boom it started somewhere around 2000 2002 or somewhere it started increasing in sky rocket one square feet area it goes in what do you call 10000 20000 30000 something like that so it become very very costly whereas when i am going for a solar paneling i need to go for a horizontal paneling suppose if i say for example i have five acres of land that five acres of land if i want to give it to solar yes i can give it to solar but i cannot go for any further agriculture in that particular land that land is good for nothing only solar practice can be done whereas in the same five acres if i go for a wind i am not going to lose anything i need just 100 to 150 square feet it is enough for the one wind turbine i can allot that place plus that company will pay me a rental plus they'll give a free energy also rest of remaining 4 acres 4 and 1/2 acres whatever it is i can practice the normal agriculture practice as it is so when it comes to the farming land farmers are ready to hand over the land to the wind turbine people not for the solar because solar occupies space 
okay so the thing single reason why solar even after 40 years could not able to reach in a large scale production comparable with wind energy because it occupy more space where the space is become very costly nowadays am i clear so that's the primary reason so now what is the latest technology why this what you call tamil nadu and tumkur could able to commission this 10000 megawatt in the last two year because the technology has changed now the solar paneling they are not putting it in horizontal again they are putting it in vertical so the vertical uh, solar panel has come in tumkur what they established in tamil nadu what they established by the private players they have done to do the vertical solar paneling because they know that they don't want to spend too much of money on spacing okay so the technology breakthrough helps now the solar energy production to an extent much more faster so maybe in coming year we may go much more faster than wind that is possible because we have a huge potential here that is possible but as of now what is the solar industries solar panel manufacturing industries what is the hiccups in india what is the hiccups this question can be asked this year mains itself what i am asking it see now the technology is available say for example you take solar technology is available and india is highly suitable for the solar and investment also to an extent it is not a big deal we are getting a good investment and we are affordable and what is the other major hiccups in this industry so this can be raised as a question this year means itself so these two projects which is in tamil nadu and karnataka which was established by adani group so adani group they have established so the big players big corporate companies are investing it what is the other major hiccups so here other major hiccup is most of the almost 70% of panel manufacturing units are from china keep it in your mind even though we are giving a call for make in india our solar panel manufacturing uh, dealers or producers they were not in a position to compete with china in terms of price so the government of india what they can do in order to protect local uh, what do you call consumer what they are coming up they are coming with extra duty for chinese import okay so that is called anti dumping duty so this is a some amount of economics you need to understand anti dumping duty what does it mean you can write down what is anti dumping duty also the domestic country in order to protect their domestic industry they can increase the import tax over and above normally what they are collecting it on any product this is the wto definition world trade organization okay world trade organization is a so world body to monitor international trade export and import so here what they are giving it domestic country in order to protect their domestic industry they can impose extra tax or a duty on the product over and above normally what they are charging okay so now recently <clears throat> during the lockdown period it happened if i'm not wrong from the june last june 2020 onwards india has imposed anti dumping duty on solar panel from china okay now because of that what happened when they have suddenly started implementing this suppose say for example i am already running a solar industry solar paneling industry i have taken few orders say for example 10 crore worth of order i have taken it and i am importing 5 crore worth of solar panel from china 
two crore worth of uh, panel has come down already before lockdown remaining 3 crore is pending now they have imposed this tax now they have imposed this tax now this remaining 3 crore i need to pay more for the chinese product that means 3 crore may become a 3.5 crore but this 5 crore order already agreement is signed agreement is signed only for 5 crore now in between my cost of expenditure has escalated cost of expenditure has escalated so now what happened i am going to delay the project i am not going to complete the project because this 50 lakhs i cannot spend from my pocket so what i am doing it this entire 5 crore project whatever i have done so far i go slow you got the point how the industry will react you need to understand when you are, you are all going to be a future ias officer because you are all going to be a policy maker so when you impose something newly of course it is good anti dumping duty it is good good for whom for those who are starting new business those who are importing new business they can procure the domestic industry they can produce it so that the production within india will increase okay so the make in india will possible whereas the ongoing projects are get struck this is what happened now now because of this this is just a kind of tip of iceberg i'm just telling it's a since we are talking about the solar we are talking about it uh, like this the same concept you can apply for all other industries in india during this lockdown what we have done it's clear during this lockdown what we have done so the many industries are got struck then the they approach the government and the government should give the relaxation okay if you have already placed an order if the invoice date is prior to government order date then you can go for a earlier duty itself so they need to come up with some new idea new order and other things that creates a lot of hiccup and the projects are getting delayed am i clear so this is one of the off the record delay due to what you call uh, only on a solar industries particularly in uh, the relations between india and china it is clear so these kind of things many industries are working closely between india and china you know what is the the, the volume of business between india and china the economic uh, export and import business volume approximately per annum anybody what is the amount of business we are doing it so the amount of business what we are doing is around 60 to 80 billion dollar keep it in your mind per year per year it's just per year 60 to 80 billion dollar it's a huge amount of money being involved in that chinese are having the surplus trade okay that means what out of 80 maybe around 45 billion dollars they are exporting it maybe 30 to 35 billion dollars we are exporting it okay so they have a surplus trade we have a deficit trade keep it in your mind so unless until we we put some this kind of anti dumping duty or something you cannot improve your domestic industry okay so that is why these kind of conflicting statements are coming conflicting what you call uh, orders or conflicting uh, taxes we are imposing it even though the chinese players may not like it it is clear so that is happening it across the globe that is a common practice that is a common practice say for example even the chinese toys to take chinese toys government of india giving a highest slab of anti dumping duty on this that is 35 percentage that is a maximum beyond that you cannot impose anything suppose the toy rate is 100 rupees let us imagine it the import duty is 20 percentage that is it become 120 rupees on this i am adding another 35 percentage on this i am adding another 35 percentage so how much it will come 
approximately around uh, another 36 to 40 rupees will be added that means the toy rate will become 140 rupees okay suppose if you are not imposing it the toy rate will be 120 rupees so by imposing this what i am doing it i am trying to assist the indian toys which is uh, placed at the market rate of maybe what you call uh, 130 rupees or 40 rupees or less than 160 so when the customer comes they will say okay chinese ties are 160 rupees indian ties are 140 rupees so that okay let us purchase indian ties so that the toy industry can thrive that's the whole logic behind it but you know what happening it even after imposing this maximum of uh, what you call anti-dumping duty chinese ties are cheaper in india than indian ties so now the government of india cannot do anything this is the maximum option for them keep it in your mind that is why when it comes to the toy market you can see the chinese are ruling the world chinese virtually ruling the world in terms of toy market keep it in your mind so now recently uh, prime minister narendra modi had given the speech in that he particularly spoken about the toy industry any of you noticed it very recently maybe one or two weeks before in his regular speech in radio okay he he spoken particularly about india should work hard to improve toy industry and we need to strengthen our infrastructure okay so how you can do it unless until indian government supports it or giving a subsidy it is not possible because the chinese are doing that only Chinese are doing that only. So the Chinese government actively participate and they'll spend huge amount of money. They make the prices very, very cheap so that they internationally they'll try to. The Indians only we are importing it. See the Indian traders only we are importing from China. Because I know that that toy, that toys I can very easily sell at premium because 100 rupees I'll get a toy. I can easily sell it for 200 rupees because for 200 rupees no Indian toys are available. In that particular category so that i'll get a profit of 100 rupees so that is possible so uh, how it is happening it because the chinese government deliberately doing it they want to attack other industries across the globe they have done it already so this is how the things will work across the globe so particularly toy industry they are very dominant recently the prime minister of india he had spoken and pointed out i hope uh, very soon mugesh Sampani i think he has already purchased some uh, toy company international toy manufacturing company and uh, the lanes they are going to enter into the toy industry uh, you may get an announcement very soon but there is process is going on that process is going on under uh, make in india scheme okay that we will see <clears throat> okay from solar we went to Toy industry. Anyway, the subjects will uh, take a call. So renewable energy, as I told, the, uh, we have seen the difference between the solar and uh, what do you call uh, wind. And next, if you see that um, you have a tidal. Another one is geothermal. And here we don't have much potential to produce like forty thousand, thirty thousand, something like that. So far, even though India is having. 7500 km of coastline under tidal energy we are just making 10 megawatt not more than that keep it in your mind it's very 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 less very very scarce and it is only for local consumption not for any industrial purpose geothermal again it is a, another new technology it is nothing but as we move deeper inside the earth the temperature will increase that temperature we are converting into electricity so that is called geothermal energy. This is also, we have a very limited uh, potential. That is hardly we have around 1500 megawatt we can make it in entire India. Right now we are just uh, doing a testing project in Himachal Pradesh. Testing project in Himachal Pradesh. <clears throat> so this is also, we cannot rely on future. Keep it in your mind. So where I'm coming, in a renewable energy, we have a limitations. Keep it in your mind. 
that means only solar and wind is the maximum in a big ticket whereas tidal geothermal under it's very small ticket <clears throat> we can't rely our future under these particular energy sources okay so no other go government of india should rely something on non renewable energy okay so which are the area will come under non renewable energy anybody which are the energy sources will come under non renewable non renewable is nothing but the say for example coal based energy crude oil fossil fuels yes natural gas all these things are nothing but fossil fuel okay it is all non renewable energy that means they have a limited resources under the earth limited resources under the earth say for example coal uh, our uh, coal corporation of india they are keep mining it and the exports are claiming it we have a coal reserve which will become an empty by 2150 ad okay so we have a national thermal power corporation they contribute around 55 percentage of total energy production in india right now as of today national thermal power corporation and this entire ntpc it totally depends on coal and the coal will be available only till 2150 that means another 130 years india will become empty of coal after that how will you replace this 55 percentage of energy so that's the big question mark that is the big question mark so unless until we invested in new technology unless until we develop some new technology unless until we look for some other option on fine day entire india half of india may become a dark okay if it is not worked out so that the government of india taking lot of active step how we can minimize our dependence from non renewable to renewable so that is the whole process this is the condition not only for india it's almost for all the countries including china us and everyone okay here india's condition we are dealing in details it is clear so in next 130 years i have to shift my dependence from coal based energy to something else okay so that is the challenge in front of india it's clear so recently not recently almost 5 years before government of india announced in uh, what you call world trade organization that by 2022 india going to produce the huge amount of solar energy and they have signed an agreement in 2016 there is an article in our website globalis.in about solar mission 2022 how far we have achieved how far we have reached that particular position i am not sure about it okay because those things are uh, what you call uh, it's, it's a kind of uh, theater call we just go there and announce it and come back are we working uh, effectively in that particular line uh, in a present uh, scenario of corona it's a doubtful maybe this target may be extended okay but it's it's a kind of uh, bigger call by a nation yes we are actively concerned about the global warming or uh, pollution uh, what do you call uh, polluting atmosphere and other things so government of india is ready to go for clean energy that is solar that means the government of india also ready to invest huge amount of money why they are doing this because i don't want to be depend on coal which is going to empty shortly it is clear so that's the whole idea that is one solar so solar it's a huge potential because india is very hot uh, we cannot fix any what you call uh, any value like wind i have told 45000 megawatt this is the maximum capacity like that we cannot fix it for a solar there is a huge potential but we need to invest huge amount of money okay now apart from solar and wind there is no other mega energy it is giving a large scale hope to india's growth aspirations you got the point india or indians want to be a superpower because we are always used to compare with us or with other countries we want to be a superpower 
So if India really want to be a superpower, then you need to produce more amount of energy. My energy production growth from solar and wind, even though it is satisfactory, it is not speed enough. It is not speed enough. I want to have a more energy as quick as possible. In next five years, I need these many, uh, what do you call uh, uh, millions of megawatt so that my economic status may improve it. My industrial aspects can improve it. My make in India capacity will increase. Production capacity may increase. But for that, the major challenging block is solar, wind, or all those things. Even though we are getting energy, our growth potential is very, very slow. It is clear. So that is why India, like developing countries, we are ready to embrace even harmful energy technology. That is the next level. You got the point? My total dependency on renewable energy is limited. Non-renewable energy, again, it is further limited. But I am energy starving country. My economic, what you call dependence, it is purely based on the energy production. Even the international politics are placed related with that. So if that is the case, I am ready to go ahead with the harmful energy technologies. It is clear, that is the next level. What is that? That is nuclear. It is clear. So this is not a new technology. Nuclear technology in India, it is available from 1962. Keep it in your mind. It's available from 1962. But that time, we never had given this much of importance. We never thought that nuclear is going to be a future. Okay. But now, if they want to scale up my energy production, I want to grow very fast, then there is no other alternative. I cannot depend on them. I need to depend on this. Because what is the advantage of nuclear energy? It's very simple. One reactor can produce maximum 2000 megawatt. I can order 100 reactors from US. So 100 into 2000. How much? Huge amount of megawatt I can able to make it. It's a ready-made reactor. I need to just construct, place them. It will take just two years. In a two years, I can make two lakh megawatt. You got the point? In a, in a matter of two years, I can make two lakh megawatt. Whereas in a coal or even solar or even wind or any other technology like hydro or tidal, even all you put together, in a two years, how much you can achieve it? It may not go beyond 20 to 30,000 megawatt. And again, their production capacity, it is questionable because every year you won't get the same amount of level because there is a huge amount of fluctuation in this. Okay, that is happening. There is a huge amount of fluctuation because uh, what you call wind is, uh, what you call every fraction of second, it tend to change. Solar, every fraction of second, tend to change. Hydro, it depends on the rain. Tidal, it depends, uncertainty. Coal is limited. Okay, so the mining, labor issues, and all those things. So this 20 to 30,000 megawatt, it is not a reliable data. Whereas in a nuclear reactor, it is not like that. Suppose if I place 10 reactor, all the 10 reactors will run without any disturbance for next 30 years. Because one life cycle of reactor is 30 years. No labor union no strike, it is uninterrupted. 30 years, once if we construct it, 30 years, you just fire and forget, that's all. You'll keep getting the energy. That's the beauty of energy technology. That is a harmful energy technology. We can't completely say it's a harmful. It is a kind of nuclear technology, you can say. But the worldwide, uh, the, they have a mindset that nuclear technology, it's a harmful, it should be avoided. It should be avoided. Uh, but who is advising this? Who is advising? Who is claiming it? It is a harmful. See, somebody advising you, it's a harmful. But you should say, who is uh, telling it? Say, for example, France. You know how much the France is producing energy in their total energy from the nuclear? France is a developed country. 
in india as of now our nuclear energy contribution is hardly around 5 to 6 percentage out of 100 5 to 6 percentage of total energy comes from nuclear whereas in a france anyone anybody can answer it how much contribution is being done by france only from nuclear energy nuclear energy alone they are manufacturing 95 percentage keep it in your mind their total energy production completely comes from nuclear alone with this technology only they become super power they become developed country they not even touching the coal they not even touching the hydro hydro is remaining 5 percentage the entire country the 95 percentage they are making nuclear but now what they are doing it wherever they go they will simply say nuclear is harmful we should go back we will try to change it you got the point so this is a kind of international politics this is where the politics involved this is where the politics involved all the developed countries they are advising developing countries and brainwashing you claiming it nuclear energy is harmful better go slow what is india stand okay well and good let me become a developed country then i will also advise others not to go for it am i clear you got my point so tomorrow you are going to be an ias officer keep it in your mind this is the stand taken by all the developed countries you take us you go to any social forum or media us will say yeah nuclear energy is harmful france will say nuclear energy is harmful japan will say it's harmful german will say it's harmful but if you see that these countries are it become a g8 countries and economically dominant countries because they got energy from nuclear and they will advise india and china and other developing countries not to go for it and they hesitant to give the nuclear technology keep it in your mind they are not ready to reveal the technology to india they are not ready to give the technology to india or even to an extent for china chinese amo they have got india they are delaying it that is where it comes the international politics you understood so the energy plays a very very crucial politics keep it in your mind that is what we are going to see in the coming uh, uh, slides so so far any doubt in this so far any doubt in this okay why the this developed country started crying like it is a harmful it happened because of recent accident in japan after massive tsunami after massive tsunami somewhere around uh, 2008 or 10 10 years before so that tsunami attacked multiple nuclear reactors in japan and the japan they struggled to contain the radioactive element some of they controlled it so now the to an extent the policy ideology among all the countries they have changed they want to go back gradually from nuclear technology to some other technology or harmful nuclear technology to harmless nuclear technology so that's the whole idea but uh, country like india and china we need a huge amount of energy otherwise we can't create the jobs we can't create the industries we can't uh, what you call erase poverty or social inequality which is highly prevalent in these countries so for that we need energy so our stand is maybe for next 20 30 years we should say we should embrace this technology maybe after that once we are economically developed well then we also can advise others that it is harmful not to go for it am i clear so any doubts so far in this so the nuclear technology it's a very big uh, topic that we are going to see when we when we are competing the whole gamut of the technology this particular aspect then you can able to understand better so if you have any questions now you can ask me